Hey everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on insertion sort and how to implement this algorithm in Java. So let's start with an example. Insertion sort starts at the left side of this array, skips the first element because it indirectly views this element as already sorted. Now it looks at the 66, the next element, and tries to insert the 66 into the sorted list consisting of the 22. So the 66 compared to the 22, and it is seen that 66 is greater than 22, so the 66 will stay at this position. Now we're trying to insert the 55 into the already sorted part. Now you can see that 55 is less than 66, so those two elements are swapped. Afterwards, 55 is compared to the 22, and because 55 is greater than 22, nothing happens, and 55 is at the right position. Now we try to insert the 11 into this array. 11 is compared to 66. It is less than 66, so those two elements are swapped. 11 is also smaller than 55, so those two elements are swapped. And 11 is less than 22, so there will be a last swap before 11 is inserted to its correct place. As you can see, we now have a list of 11, 22, 55, 66 that is already sorted. And now we want to insert the 33. So the 33 will be compared to 66. They will be swapped. Then it will be compared to 55. Because it is less than 55, they will be swapped. And afterwards, because 33 is greater than 22, the iteration stops here. And we can continue with the last element, the 44. We swap the 44 and the 66. And we swap the 44 and the 55. And now the whole array is sorted and insertion sort is finished. So I hope this example clarified how insertion sort works. And now let's begin with the implementation. And therefore let's define a class called sorting. Now inside this class, let's define a method called insertion sort. And this method will take an integer array as an argument and returns our integer array after it has sorted this array. So to define our algorithm, remember that we want to go from left to right in this array, starting at the second element. We can use a for loop for this starting at index i equals 1, which points at the second element, and having the break condition i is less than array.length. Array.length just gives you the number of elements that this array contains. So this for loop just goes from left to right. And now inside this loop, remember that we want to go from the current position i to the left of the array and check if we need to do some swaps. So let's define an index j that is i in the beginning. And with this index, we now can define an inner loop. This time we use a while loop with the condition j is greater than zero. So we just want to go left until we reach the most left point in the area. And in this condition, we check if we need to do swap. We check if array at index j minus one is greater than array at index j. And in this case, we want to swap those two elements. And in Java, you can implement a swap um, with this simple trick. You need to define a temporary variable that holds the array at index j. Afterwards, you can assign the array at index j minus 1 to the array at index j. And at last, you need to store the temp variable at position j minus 1 again. And after those three steps, we successfully swapped the element at index j with the element at index j minus 1. And now we just want to go left, so we have to tell our loop to decrease our index j. And this is basically everything we need to do. But since we defined our method to return the sorted array, we must not forget our return statement at the end. 
And now let's test our implementation by writing a main method. And inside this main method, let's define our example array from earlier. In Java, you can use this curly bracket notation to create an array of some given elements. Now let's call our method on our array. And at last, let's print our array. Um, notice that I use the arrays.toString method. And if you want to use this method, you have to import the arrays class. When I now run this program in my console, my output will look like this. And as you can see, this is a sorted array. And this is everything we wanted. I would recommend to try to implement this yourself and see if it works. But if you have further questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. And I hope I see you in the next video.